Inkscape 1.3 is out, or will be in a few days, depending on my editing speed. It's been a longer than usual wait since May 2022. But it's so worth it. I have a list of certain relevant updates here, and we'll start with the smallest there are. Notes. Within one path, we can now draw around nodes to select them. Your creativity isn't limited by rectangular selection anymore. This is useful for many tasks where you want to pull a group of nodes, like size blending or adjusting seam allowance. On Linux, it's drawing with Shift Alt to select the nodes inside and Control Alt to create inverted selection. I believe it's just Alt on Windows and Mac. You know your system and I don't. It's optional or something. There is also an already existing way to select multiple objects with Select Tool by drawing across them. I'd like to see a blend of those two features where I could select objects by drawing around them, like in my montage here. You might remember in the Inkscape 1.2 video I wasn't impressed with the snapping button in the corner. I got used to it since and moved to much smaller laptop screen and very rarely need to fine-tune particular settings anyway. But now there is an option to have it along the right edge, like before. Sadly, not along the top edge, as I liked it. Then again, with laptop screen it makes more sense to leave it in the corner. I remind you to switch off the alignment snapping if you edit patterns, if you value sanity, of course. The previous version introduced great accessibility improvements, specifically icon resizing, but align and distribute icons were left small for aesthetic reasons. The layout may still change, but now they are resized along with other toolbar icons and much easier to see. I agree, it looks a bit crowded, but usable. My early viewers will remember the famous escape hack, where you would import one A4 page of the pattern, ungroup it a few times, and the full pattern shape would appear. This was happening because ungrouping also removed clipping. There are good news and bad news here, and being an Eastern European, I'll start with bad news. This won't longer work by default, but there is a setting to keep the old behavior. The hack isn't much relevant now that PDF Stitcher exists, of course, but that's an important change to know about. Now we are getting to juicy stuff. I have a separate video prepared on the topic with more detail, but hey, builder! If you never used a certain industry standard software, you won't know about it like I didn't, but many people do. It's a great way to deal with patterns that have lots of different options and cutting lines. A bit buggy here and there, but really useful. If you click, you get separate shapes, but most of the time you'll want one. That's achieved with dragging. The result is union of the shapes you dragged upon, ready for coloring, creating layout or adjustments. You can also exclude parts by clicking with Shift. I showed PDF layers in several videos by now, as I tend to use development versions. In 1.3 they are released for everyone. Well, everyone can use development versions, to be fair. And it's not just layers. The whole PDF import was overhauled. The dialog is different, and under the hood it works much better. It now defaults to converting the text to path, which I don't recommend. Several techniques, like paint bucket one shown in the previous video, depend on you being able to hide all the text. For that, there is Substitute Missing Fonts option in the drop-down list. Only a pattern name font, a particularly curved one, has kerning problems, and those are fixed with selecting it and text remove manual currents. 
And that's why I created a custom shortcut for manual kerns removal a few years ago. Layers look nice and have familiar names. All hail Martin Owens. Layers import visible at the moment, and you can turn their visibility off at will. There are infinite ways to create PDFs and layers in other software, so from time to time you will find a buggy pattern, or rather a buggy pattern import. Please report those, or at least tell me about that, in the comments, or better, in my cozy Discord server. Objects and layers panel got better too. Apart from opacity that I habitually change in the bottom left corner anyway, and blending modes that both you and me barely ever use, it has the current selection indication. So we can both click elements to select them on canvas, or click them on canvas and see them selected in the object tree. I use this often for select same operations. Or for hiding or locking multiple objects. And finally, PDF export. Export was improved overall, but for us it means yet another workflow change, arguably for the better. Pages now have margins and bleed, and then the same bleed we used to use, only it's more visual and is set in a different place. With Page Tool active, click to arrows icon and find Page Bleed field. Enter the familiar 500 mm and the page will expand all around. You can also see this change on the canvas. Then just pull the page corners to make the resulting file big enough for the pattern and export as page. With this, you don't have to use Bleed at all, to be honest. Just pull the corners to have plenty of space around. There are many more changes, subtle or not, I am personally pleased to see functional font collections. But with all this introduced, you should be up to speed and back to Soyan. Come to my Discord to talk, to Patreon to support, and into comments for engagement. See you soon!